morning, Manala, and anyone else who is listening, I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we come right now thanking you, O oh God, that you're God and besides you there is no other. We recognize, O oh God, that you're worthy to be praised, that you deserve all the glory and honor. Father, we ask, O oh God, right now that you send your Holy Spirit on down, that you would come into our homes, to our churches, dwell in this vessel if you only dwell for a small spell. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you would forgive us of our sins that you would cleanse us up right now, O oh God, that you would make us better today than we were yesterday. Help us to always strive to be better and better for you. Father, we pray today, O oh God, that you would grant us all the wisdom that we desire. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you would give us strength in our time of weakness. We ask, O oh God, that you would give us peace in the, must of, in the midst of a troubling world, we ask, O oh God, that you would give us good health, O oh God, that you would heal our bodies, that you would make everything all right, O oh God. We know that the coronavirus is running rapid, O oh God, but we know that you are all powerful. And against you, the coronavirus doesn't stand a chance. But we understand, O oh God, that you have granted us with wisdom, O oh God, and so we will make good decisions. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you would go into the prison walls. Father, we ask that, that you continue to, that we pray for our leaders from the heads of the United States on down to the heads of the cities and towns. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you would send a fresh anointing, O oh God, upon me, O oh God, that I may be able to preach your uncompromising gospel that I may be able to preach your word, O oh God, to a dying world. Father, help me to be all that I can be for you. We ask, O oh God, that you allow the people to see less and less of me and more and more of you. And we'll be so able to give you all the honor and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Today, before we get started again, we want to go over a few announcements again. We're going to keep pub and Bible study and prayer meeting. Amen. It starts at, on Wednesday. We start getting on the conference line about 645. Goes to about 645, 745. I would say the number out, but I will let the deacons get the numbers out to you. Uh, we will uh, text, uh, group me, any other fashion that we can do to get the word out to you. And this week, uh, our, our attribute of God that we will be discussing will be God is just. God is just. He's a just God. And as last week I told you, we're still uh, testing different technologies, Group Me, Zoom, Facebook Live, YouTube. So we will continue to evolve in that area. And we ask that you be patient and pray with us as we navigate through this difficult time. Amen. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will live. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. 
because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are I will live my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are Jehovah Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Amen. Amen. Giving praises and honor to God, we ask that you would turn with, with us, if you will, to Isaiah 53. We're going to Start at the first verse, but we will go until the Lord says so. Amen. Isaiah 53, starting at the first verse. And it reads, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the ground of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hide, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And he was esteemed, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we deemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastening of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. As we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. We, 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 we're going to try to concentrate on that sixth verse. And, and if we were to use as a subject today, are you willing to let the Lord shepherd you? Or, or, are you willing to let the Lord shepherd you? And, and, and as I as I as I read and I and I dealt with this scripture, 
I said to myself, I said, well, before we can be willing to let the Lord shepherd us, we have to first know what a shepherd is. We have to first know what a shepherd is. And so, so as I started to research, because we live in a day and time where we no longer farm, we no longer ranch, we don't do those kind of things. So when we refer to things like shepherding, I, I, I don't know if we really get the grasp of what a shepherd did. What is a shepherd? The shepherd is the one who cares for the sheep. The shepherd. The shepherd is one who, who cares for the sheep. Not, not, not only is he responsible for caring for the sheep, there, there are some duties that, that, that the shepherd is responsible for. He, he must feed them. Not, not, not only is he responsible for feeding the flock, feeding the sheep, he's also responsible for protecting them. Not, 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 not only is he responsible for protecting them, he also is responsible for leading them, giving them direction. And so, 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 so when, I, when, I, when I read it and I, I started to, to, to read the scripture, I was like, why does he refer to his people as sheep? Well, if you know anything about sheep, Sheep have a tendency to be wayward, to wander, to do whatever they feel like, when they feel like it, how they feel like it. A lot of times sheep are lost, just going to and fro, just doing what they want to do. Does that not sound much like us today? We do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it with no regard to anyone else but ourselves. And I was like, man, why, I don't understand why I would be compared to a sheep. But it's very clear here in the sixth verse of the 53rd chapter that it says, all we like sheep. He's talking about us. He, he, he's talking about us. That, 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 that our, the things that we do and how we wonder are just like sheep. So okay, 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 I, I, I guess I can get it. I guess we, we, we do have a tendency to stray. We have a tendency to do what we want to do. But I, and I looked at it and he said, the part that got me here though, he said, oh. He ain't say, you know, once, you, once you, you get saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost that you, you no longer Go astray. And see, and that's the misconception that we have as Christians. That, 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 that we put out there that, that, that makes it so hard for other people to come aboard. Makes it so hard for other people to say, I want to be a part of that. Because we, we, we put on the airs and the pretense that we are perfect. That once we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that we don't never 
go off the beaten path, that we don't never ever do the wrong things, that we are always going in the direction that the Lord has us to go, that we're always doing what he's told us to do, that we're always doing the right thing. I said this years ago, I, I, and, and I continue to say it, one of the biggest flaws of our Christian people is that we are so afraid to expose ourselves. We, 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 we're afraid to let people know that we're not perfect. We're afraid to let people see the dark side. We, 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 we are so afraid to let people see that we are not always on the straight and narrow because we're afraid we're going to be judged. We're afraid that people are going to look at us differently. We're afraid that people are going to say, oh, you're not who I thought you were. We're afraid people are going to, going to judge us in a, in a harsh manner. Because you can do 10 things good, but, but that one thing that you do bad, people always have a tendency to focus on the one bad thing and, 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 and eliminate the 10 good. Because that's our human nature. We want to find flaws in one another because, because we know that we are flawed. And if I can see your flaws, and if I can point your flaws out, it, it makes me feel better when I say and talk about your flaws. But the Bible says, he says that all have gone astray. We, we, have, we have turned and gone and done our own thing. What it sounds like, it says, what that says to me is he's trying to say, let me paraphrase, he says, none of us are perfect. None of us have the right to judge anyone else. None of us are sinless. None of us. He says, we are all sin, falling short of the glory of God. But the good shepherd, the good news that he says, he says, but he had laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, that's the good news. That's the good news that he says that when we talk about that, he says that even here, Isaiah foretold even before the death of Christ, even before there was any mention of him dying on the cross, he foretold through his sanctified looking glass sin. He's going to die. He's going to come back for the remissions of our sins. He's going to be disrespected. He's going to be beaten and bruised. For our iniquities, he's going to take it all on. He, he, he's going to be the one to pay the price. A price that we could never, ever, ever pay for ourselves. He says, it says he took it on. He took on sin. One who knew no sin. He took on the beaten one who didn't deserve to be beaten. He took on the ridicule when there was nothing about him to be ridiculed about. He took on the establishment when we couldn't take on the establishment ourselves. He, he, he and he alone could take on the sins of this world. He, he, God, by himself, sent his son for you and I so that we might have access to him 24-7. And I said, are you willing to let the Lord shepherd you? And if you are, or maybe you're not, why do we make it so hard? Knowing that the shepherd always has his sheep's best interest.
interest at heart. Knowing that the shepherd is always there to protect and guide. Knowing that he's always there to feed you. I'm not going to keep you long today. And as I thought about it, I said, why do we make it so hard? Why have we not been willing to let the Lord shepherd us? Maybe it's because we don't think like David. David said it best in the 23rd number of Psalm. He says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Meaning that, that, that he's my shepherd, he's my provider, he, he has everything that I need. He will not let me want for anything. He's my provider. This is what I like, he says, and he leadeth me, lie me down in green pastures. Now, I don't know about you, but, but if you think about it, and you think about it, about it from a sheep's perspective, he says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, meaning that, that I have an abundance of food. Green all over the place. I ain't got to worry about nothing. And he leadeth me besides the steel waters. Means that he, he, he gives us peace and serenity when we decide to let the Lord shepherd us. Says he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, that's what it was. I kept on talking. I was trying to find out why we were not willing to let the Lord shepherd us. And here it is. It got me. It said, he leadeth us in the path of righteousness. Maybe we just don't want to be righteous. Maybe, 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 maybe that's our problem. Maybe he's trying to send us in a direction that we want, that, that he wants us to go. But we don't want to go down that path. He says, yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. But why? Because he protects you. For thou art with me. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but, but, but when I was growing up, I, 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 when I got myself in situations that I could not handle, if I could call on my big brother, I always felt like I was protected and safe. That's the way we ought to feel when the presence of Lord is, is about us, that no matter where we go, no matter what we come in contact with, he said, thou art with me. Just like the good shepherd, he says, thou rod and thou staff that protect me. That staff was one that could pull you back when you got out of line, but it was also used for a weapon to keep away evil doers and those who would harm the flock. He said, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Sometimes you're not going to always be able to be with those who love you, those who care about you. Sometimes you're going to be in the midst of those who mean you harm. But be assured because he says, Thou anointest my head with all. He said, My cup runneth over. And this is the part I like. He said, but surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So David knew. David was a man who had been through some things. David was a man 
who was a man after God's own heart, but a man who had a past, a man who had done some wrong things, a man who was not perfect, a man who had made some mistakes. I challenge you today, let the Lord lead you because he's one who does not always hold what you did against you. He's one who's willing to give you another shot. If you are willing to serve him, and he's willing to forgive you of your sins, why wouldn't you want to let someone lead you like that? One who, 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 who blots out all your sins. One who died on the cross for you. One who protects you when you can't protect yourself. One who guides you where you don't, when you don't know where to go. I challenge you today, Mount Olive. I challenge you, anyone who's listening over the internet. I challenge you today. To let the Lord shepherd you because he always knows what's best for you. Amen. This is a time that we, we take and we take nothing for granted. We, we, we don't. We don't assume anything. We don't assume that your soul is saved. We don't assume that, that nothing is lost. We don't assume. We don't assume your relationship at all. Because that relationship you have is a personal relationship. It's not mine. It's not yours. I mean, it's not mine. It's not anybody else's. It's yours. Yours with him and yours alone. You know where you stand with him. You know what you want. You know what he wants from you? He says, my sheep know me, and I know them. I know them all by name. So I tell you today that if you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, if you have not thus far decided to let the Lord shepherd you, Maybe you accepted Jesus Christ a long time ago. Maybe you, 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 you become a, a part of the fellowship of Christ a long time ago. You just have said, Lord, I, I, I know who you are. I believe. I have faith. I know. But you still are holding on to your own will. That you're still refusing to follow him. You're refusing to let him lead you where he wants you to go. I challenge you today to turn it over to him, to let him lead you where he wants you to go. It starts by, how do I find out where he wants me to go? Does, does, does he come down and just, and, just, and just plant himself on me, or does he send me telepathic messages? How does he, how do I know what he wants? I challenge you to read your Bible more. I challenge you to join us at prayer meeting and pray just a little bit more. Because the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, I guarantee you he will be in the midst. I challenge you to do those things. And if you are don't want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Or are you, you just saying, I don't care, I just I, I want, to, want to be prayed for? We're going to pray for you right now, and then we're going home. Amen? Father, we thank you. We thank you for those who have heard the message. We thank you, O oh God, for those who are listening to us over the Internet. Father, we ask, O oh God, that if there was anyone who desired to Make you Lord of their life, Father. We ask, O oh God, that you would grant them that right now, oh God. Father, enter into their hearts, O oh God, that they want to let you take total control, that they want to be more like you. Father, we ask, O oh God, for those who need prayer. Father, we ask, O oh God, you know their circumstances. You know what they stand in need of right now. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to bless them like only you can. 
deal with their situation, oh God, because you are the one who's always in control. Father, we ask in this in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And thank God.